Hi, welcome to my show uh, where I get to interview amazing, talented Michiganders such as Marie Gates, who I've known for over 20 years now. Uh, I met her at the Rochester Writers Group uh, where she's been leading, she was leading that for 29 years. Um, and she's an author and she's a wonderful, wonderful friend. So I am so happy that Marie is here today. Hi, Marie. Hi. Um, I do have to, um, I have some announcements first. I'll be really quick with this and then we get to talk uh, about her books and her really amazing experiences. I think uh, it's really interesting when an author has a, an amazing experience such as she has about her past life that she's gonna share today with us. Um, so real quick, um, some announcements. On February 4th, I'm gonna be speaking at the Center of Enlightenment. That's Sunday, um, it's in Ferndale and service starts at 10 a.m. Uh, March 22nd, I will be speaking again at the Center of Enlightenment at 7 p.m. for um, Arise Spiritual Retreat and Wellness. Um, March 3rd, there's a three-part workshop series called Transforming Your Life. And uh, that's at the Royal Oak Library. It's every Wednesday, uh, March 14, 21, and 28 from 7 to 8.30. October 5th to 7th, uh, Spiritual and Writing Summit. That's at Columbia Retreat and Conference Center in Clarkston. Um, you can find more information about that at thepathofconsciousness.com. And November 10th is a Detroit Working Writers Conference at the MSU Management Education Center in Troy. I'm vice president of DWW, and I'm very proud uh, of this organization, so put it down in your calendars. Now, Marie, <laughs> <laughs> please, please tell us about your first book, which... Um, your second book is Are We Our Past Lives? But your first book is Shadows on My Mind. And um, tell us about that first a little bit. Okay. How I wrote that was because I was once a instructor at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. I taught psychology. But you were born here, right? I was born in Michigan. Yes. I was born in Port Huron, Michigan. Okay. But my husband um, had a job with Monsanto in Decatur, Alabama. And so we moved there. And uh, I looked in the newspaper and I saw where they needed a psychology instructor at the University of Alabama, which was in nearby Huntsville. So I went there and I taught some classes. One of my students knew a hypnotist who did past life regressions. And she asked me if I wanted to uh, experience that. And I wasn't sure, but the reason I decided to go was because I had a very strange dream. This was a dream of an extraterrestrial who looked as human as you or I look, um, and an earth woman. It was a romance. And, but it was deeper than a romance. It was like this extraterrestrial knew about the history of Earth, the history that none of us know unless you watch ancient aliens on TV um, because the, the aliens did have something to do with our evolution. We might have started off as cavemen, but were gradually, or even before cavemen, were gradually changed by uh, these extraterrestrials. And he wanted me, in the dream, he wanted me to know that. So I thought, what a strange thing. But then later on, I, I read uh, Chariots of the Gods, and I knew that that wasn't an idea that um, was, was all that new, because that book, I believe, came out in the 60s, late 60s. So I, I was just fascinated, and I thought, well, when Martha asked me if I wanted to see the hypnotist, I thought maybe I could find something that would connect with this dream I had. So I went to the hypnotist, and he regressed me to several past lives. One was of a Native American, and there were several others, but then one was of a woman who lived in New Haven, Connecticut in the 1940s. Hmm. and uh, gave her name 
No, I wanted to protect the privacy of the woman, so I call her Amanda Randall. That isn't really her name. Is is she the one that is in shadows on my mind? Yes. Is that what the story is around that around particular person? Around her and her life. Yes. And, and my experiences with metaphysics or psychic uh, phenomena, that kind of thing, that is in that book. Mm-hmm. And I also put her in my second book. Mm-hmm. And there is a photograph of uh, Amanda uh, Randall when she was about 20 years old, I found out from her daughter. And one for me when I was 21, and they look very similar. And they are included in this, this book, Are We Our Past Lives? Mm. And this, let me, this is uh, your second book. I actually yes. have it right here. Um, this is your second book, Are We Our Past Lives? Now that goes into different past lives. And you see in the, in the, on the cover, they have the names of the past lives that were involved in this book with a symbol as to who they were, like Carl was into ships, building ships. Now, what, what, what do you mean? Are you talking about? I'm talking ha- about those um, drawings. Okay, but uh, are they your as associated to your past lives? Yes. You want that far? That's so how Marie's many Marie's past lives? Okay. So how I, many? Uh, how far did you go? Well, on that one, I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine on that one. Okay. I do not have uh, Amanda Randall on there. That was in my first book, but I I do have Amanda Randall uh, spoken about in the second book but I don't have her on the cover as one of the, uh, the symbols there. Mm-hmm. Marie, Maria was a nurse in, in the past life in uh, the Crimea. And my husband and son and I were in the same family as we have today. I only have one son, and we did in that uh, lifetime too. And we came back because we all died in the Crimean War. Now, I got to ask you, um, w- did you have any kind of belief system about this prior to that? Or was the, did the dream speak so loudly to you, resonated so much that that's why you pursued this? Was there anything from before that was kind of slowly coming on with, with this information? Well, it might have been. I, uh, when I was in Alabama, we stayed there four years, but before I met the hypnotist, I was interested all of a sudden in big band music. Before that, I wasn't interested in big band music. Then I started collecting albums and listening to it. So I was interested more in the 1930s and 40s. And it came out that Amanda Randall had lived in that time. In fact, Amanda died uh, just about three months before I was born. So that was in the 40s. Yeah, I was born in 46. She died in February. I was born in May. And so what uh, what role do you play? This is, what was your connection to her, basically, that you, this was who you are, you were? I was Amanda Randall in the past life. Okay. And I was also Maria, the nurse in the Crimean War. I would like to hear about, um, I remember uh, from the time that I was part of the, the writer's group, because uh, that's I think that's when your first book was published, um, you were bringing in pictures, which you brought today. Um, the trip that you made regarding, your, was it your daughter or your um, uh What I did was I got the name Amanda Randall and her husband's name from hypnosis, Mm -hmm. also the place where they lived, New Haven, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And of course, the years when they lived there was in the 30s and 40s and so on. And uh, so when we moved back to Michigan, my husband said, why don't you go look uh, up (laughs) those people? And so I did. And about the first thing I did when I, I got to New Haven was I went to the city directories and I actually found my husband's name and also um, a variety of, of 
Alice's name. I had called her Lisa during hypnosis, but she was listed as Alice. Mm -hmm. And so um, it gave the address where they lived. So the next day I took a bus out there. It was in a downtown section. It was an old part of New Haven. And it so happened that there was um, a liquor store in the building where the address I had found on, on the uh, in the city directories. So I walked in and I started talking to the proprietor. It was a liquor store. And uh, I said, well, do you know who owned this building in the 1940s? Because he looked very young, like he wouldn't mm -hmm. have owned the building in the 40s. Uh -huh. And so he gave me his name and phone number. So I went back to my hotel and I started um, looking in the phone book trying to find uh, any evidence of, 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 of that family. And I was given the name of the, the daughter when I talked to um, the actual landlord from the 40s. So then I, I could look it up in the phone book and I, and I did call several people before I got in contact with my past life daughter, who is... Um, Amanda Jones, that's the name I give her. Again, mm -hmm. those are false names. Amanda Jones. Is, is she in any of those pictures that you brought today or no? Yes, this okay. is Amanda Jones. If you can Jones. put that up a little bit. This is my uh, past life daughter. Okay. As far as I know, she's deceased now. How I never, old was she at that time when you met with her? When I met with her, I would say she was probably in her 60s. Okay. Okay. Uh, she, I think, passed on recently. She was in her 90s. Okay. So um, did you keep contact with oh, her yes, after I did. you met her? Yes, I did. We sent Christmas cards, and I always sent her a birthday card, and I sent her kind of like a reverse Mother's Day card <laughs> because <laughs> I was uh, her mother in the past life. and Of course, she couldn't send her daughter anything because she was deceased. But yeah, I would send her, a, and we caught, talk on the phone. And when I was on a radio show, when I put out our We Are Past Lives, mm -hmm. I got involved with uh, an organization that would get me on the radio, Radio and TV Interview Report it's called. Mm -hmm. And so um, there was a, a radio show right in that New Haven area. Mm -hmm. I made sure I called my past life daughter and told her about it. She listened to the show with her girlfriend, <laughs> and she was very happy. She really liked to hear me talk about it. She was always very open. Mm -hmm. She never really told me if she believed in reincarnation, but she always tolerated me anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I didn't have to, act, you know, I didn't so want to probe her or anything. Yeah, but and so basically she, she embraced you and you were... You know your your experience. She yes, embraced she it, did. and she allowed you um, to fully experience what why you went there and to do your research. And um, so I, I remember it was like a, a very good experience for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's another picture that I'd like you to share. Maybe tell us a little bit about that too. The gravesite. Yes, please. Yes. I went to visit Amanda. This was just after my mother passed away. My mother sent me a message via a dream, and she said, Amanda is awful sick. Now, I know my mother would have said somebody is awful sick. That would be the word she would use. So I thought, that's my mother. I didn't know why she was sick. But then I called and found out she had had brain surgery. And she had had it both, on both sides of her brain because the doctors made a mistake and got the incorrect side the first time around. Mm -hmm. She was recovering, so my mother was right. Mm -hmm. In a way, she was mm -hmm. sick. And so I arranged to go out to see her. I wanted to make sure she was there, uh, that I could see her before she passed on because I didn't know what would happen. And so I, I actually got to stay with her. She was staying in a large house, and she was staying in the nanny apartment that the owners had fixed for the nanny, when the nanny was no longer there, they wanted to rent it out, so they rented it out to her. So this was a very nice place, and I spent the weekend with her. We even shared the bedroom. You know, we had the twin beds, you know, mm -hmm. we shared that. Mm -hmm. And because um, Amanda was not well enough to drive, 
she had a friend of hers come and pick us up, and I wanted to see the gravesite. I wanted to see where her mother was buried. Mm -hmm. And so she took me to the gravesite, and this is it. Yes, and you know what? If you just put it, I guess I'd have yeah, to put it in yeah, some this way. Is, um, now, there's a story I remember about the fact that the shadow is right. Uh, shadows on my the mind. Shadow. Well, this was the same. Yeah, yeah that was. <laughs> I know there was a story to this that was because this yes. has been a while ago, and so this became your front cover. Um, yes, my sister said I should. Um, yeah, because there's a story Put behind that, that about and, um, how the, the cover. shadow so came up. Yeah. Okay, what happened was we went out to the graveyard. Mm -hmm. There was no tree. There was no building. There wasn't anything we could see that would cast that shadow. So I thought it was kind of a, a mystical sort of thing, a metaphysical thing maybe, mm -hmm. that something had cast that shadow. And what it meant to me was... You know, I was on the right track, and I pr should pursue this. Mm -hmm. You know, because here it was, it was from the other side that I got, that the shadow was there. I mean, I didn't produce it. Nothing that I could see was producing it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I called the book Shadows on My Mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that was the story. We were all, because um, when, when you were sharing it with the writers group and elsewhere, um, we've, this was very fascinating that this shadow just came out of, nowhere so and and even your dreams they seem very specific there's like there's certain guidance in your dreams oh sure um, yeah uh, well again you know some people might have issues with that they might just think it's a dream but look how where it led you I mean it led you to a real person <laughs> <laughs> and and the fact is that it happened to be where she was open to you know, she welcomed you in. She mm -hmm. could have been somebody who was, if she was closed-minded about it. So, so she could have hung up on me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I first called her, uh, I wasn't going to say I'm your mother from the past life. I didn't want to really have her think I was crazy or anything like that. I just said I was interested in your family. I was studying <laughs> genealogy. Well, it is a sort of genealogy, a spiritual genealogy. And, uh, and I wanted to know all about her mother. And when she told me uh, that her mother had been a stenographer for A&P during the, um, I guess it was the 40s, but she had gotten sick. She had a ulcer. And uh, so I wondered if I had the right woman because when I was under hypnosis, I said that uh, this woman was a housewife and she had two children. Well, actually, uh, her mother did. Uh, Amanda did have two children. Mm -hmm. She had uh, the daughter and, that I knew and then the son. And the son's wife would not want to deal with uh, reincarnation. So I was told not to contact her. So I did not. I did not contact Oh, so there was another Amanda's person. Brother. I did okay. not contact Amanda's brother because I didn't want to make trouble in the family. Okay, so there was two ki two children mm -hmm. that, and then the brother, the son, uh, or from the past. And life, he was, either. by the way, he was um, an author too, in a sense, or at least he was a writer for a newspaper. Yeah, so that showed an interest that is similar to mine. You know, it was like we were connected in some ways, and also I had been a teacher, and then Amanda, the daughter, was was like a teacher's aide for a long time. That was like her career. So there, there were, were connections. There was connections, yeah, because you've been, you had been teaching for a while. So regarding the son, though, he didn't personally um, reject this. It was his wife that you heard. She thought that, uh, Amanda thought that the wife would reject it and would make trouble among them. And so I thought, I just won't do it. I won't okay. pursue anything. Because I'm curious that maybe perhaps he would have been interested, especially he since he, been, he since was since a writer. He was into writing, yes. yes. And you're a writer. I mean, just that alone could have had created a connection. Yeah, that would have. But I, I just didn't want to pursue that. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, getting back to my conversation with Amanda on the telephone about her mother, uh, I wondered if I had the right person because here, the one I gave as Lisa over um, hypnosis and hypnosis, uh, being a housewife with two young children. And then the big thing was, and I didn't even want to share this with uh, the daughter, with Amanda, the daughter, 
was that this woman had run away with the E.T. that I got in the dream. I, that was my big thing. And, of course, this did not happen, according to um, the daughter, that uh, her, her mother was pretty uh, straight-laced, you might say. <laughs> she wouldn't have done something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And so then I wondered if I had the right person. And I knew from studying reincarnation that if anybody remembers anything from a past life, it's likely the death scene. So I wasn't thinking of my own uh, memory of, of uh, the death scene from Alice but I, or Amanda, but I asked the daughter how her mother had died. Well, it was from a bleeding ulcer. Her brother came home from, uh, was coming home from California, having fought in World War II. And so um, Amanda, the mother, had worked really hard to get the apartment and ship, ship or in really good shape, mm -hmm. you know. And so she uh, worked herself too hard. And, and she wound up having a rupture of her ulcer, had to go to the hospital. And, uh, and it was a Catholic hospital because the father had been a Catholic. Mm -hmm. So he sent her to St. Raphael's in uh, New Haven. Well, then when she said it was a Catholic hospital, there was a woman in a Catholic hospital dying. Then it, it uh, jogged my memory because when I was about three years old, I remembered my death scene, that I was an older lady. I was in a Catholic hospital because the nuns were dressed in their habits. And my daughter was with me. So I said, were you with your mother when she died? Oh, yes, I held her hand. And I can still remember her with the lawn coat. It was February at New Haven, so they'd be wearing their winter clothing. And she had a scarf on, which was common in those days in the 40s. Yeah. So then I thought, oh, my God, I've got to believe this. At first, I didn't want to believe in reincarnation. Mm -hmm. I was just exploring it. Well, then I thought, well, now I've got to believe in it. It validates this memory I had. And my mother said, well, it was a dream, but I knew it wasn't. I was awake. I remembered it. Hmm. So, and so once you um, started believing this, so how did reincarnation and those uh, the past lives that were coming to you, how, how did they affect your life? I mean, was it a scary thing or was it something enlightening for you or did you learn a lesson in this? Obviously, it's part of it became part of your work, so that's one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but how else did it affect your life and even maybe your family's life too? Well, my family didn't really want to accept it, but they accept me. They know I'm a little different from everybody else. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. <laughs> In a good well, way. Yeah. Uh, then I, I wanted to explore spirituality. And so then I started doing that and joined uh, the Edgar Casey Society, which I still am a member. Mm -hmm. And I also went over to the Etheria Society, which is in Royal Oak here, and uh, went to some of their lectures over there. Mm -hmm. So I was just interested in uh, metaphysics and things of that nature, which I'd never been interested in before I had these experiences. So it affected me in that way. Uh now, at that time, when all this was happening, so you had your son, what, what age range was he in? So was this like, in, you know, well, how long ago was... Well, this was before he was born that I was in Alabama. We were in Alabama for oh, four years. Is, okay. When we got home, uh, he was born, but uh, he was born when we were married nine years. So oh, there was a, a, a lengthy, <laughs> yes, okay. there yeah. was a, a lengthy time uh, before he was born, mm -hmm. and I went to New Haven, Connecticut, and found my past life daughter before he was born. Okay, well, I would like. Um, let me put this cover up there again. Um, what about some of the other past lives? I mean, there is you. You show that there's some that are uh, male men. Oh yes, and and, they, and I understand that half of our past lives are male and half female. Okay. That's about the way it goes. So that's how it was with me. Well, I'll start up with the top with Helena. Mm -hmm. And she was uh, killed during the uh, French Revolution. 
She happened to be a member of the upper class. And uh, I put the, the lamb up there because she was an innocent lamb. She was only tw 12 years old when she was executed, along with her whole family. Okay. Well, how about let's do because we only have a few minutes left. And what I'm interested in is um, what's with, uh, I'm interested in Jacob. J Jacob, okay. Why is there a cross there? Yes, there's a cross because he was a minister. Oh. He was a Methodist minister for 50 years. Okay. Between uh, the late uh, 1700s through about 1850, mm -hmm. or it must have been a little over 50 years. Well, anyway, he was a minister. Mm -hmm. And he was um, arrested for inciting the slaves to rebel because Maryland was a slave state. And he was speaking at one of these outdoor conferences they had in those days in, in the uh, 1800s. Mm -hmm. And he spoke out against slavery. Oh. And so that was a no-no because this was a slave state. Mm -hmm. And so he was prosecuted but exonerated. He didn't have to go to jail or anything over it. But he complained in the book that was written about him, The Life of Jacob Gruber, was that is um, that the cover that yes you have? that's you the cover that here yeah because we only this have is a, Jacob a few Gruber. minutes left I'd like to show that and the name of his book the life of Jacob Gruber so interesting no um you want to hold it like this so it's interesting that you have um these connections with writers a teach I mean they kind of fall in that same well work. he was a writer too right, he exactly. wrote for a newspaper mm -hmm. and I went to Baltimore and I actually read some of his articles that he mm -hmm. had written for the newspaper there mm -hmm. and the fact that he stood up for um, like he was against slavery and I can see those traits I mean knowing you for the many years that I've known you're very um, you, you're very embracing of people. You try to serve. You try to help people. I mean, this is why you were part of the group. I know many, many wonderful people who uh, were inspired by you and who learned a lot. And you created a, a very uh, sacred space for a lot of people. And you still do. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I've gotten to many connections through your help. And so that kind of seems that has that same, oh, you know, yeah. he's a minister and you have that kind of, oh, my goodness. And I'm running out of time, which I really hate. I feel like, you know, your story is so rich. I mean, we were going to talk about that you had, uh, you have, you're a very fascinating woman. I really suggest that people go to your website. Uh, so it's it's your name, right? MarieGates.com. Is that what yes, it is? Or, uh -huh. Okay. You need to go to her website and look at her beautiful work. She has amazing stories. You need to get the books, basically, um, and, and learn more about uh, past life experiences, Spe specifically her story. She went to so much research and depth to, to do that. Um, and so thank you well, so much. Well, may I say me. something? Sure. I think uh, my actual uh, website is are we our past lives dot com. Oh, it's the name of the book. Yeah. Are we our and past lives, lives dot com. com. But if you want to get me by email, it's Marie at e are we our past lives dot com. Okay, very good. Thank you so much for coming. Um, you, I, I have to bring you back because you there was other stories that I told you that I wanted you to share, but but you know when you have a rich life, you can't fit it into half an hour. So uh, thank you everybody for being on the show and have a wonderful night. Thank you. I was pleased to be on the show.